Welcome back. Well, did the Virgin Mary appear before four young girls in a remote Spanish village in the early 60s? Believers say the Virgin Mary appeared hundreds of times, and for some witnesses, it was a shattering experience. The girls' visions were preceded by three interior calls, each becoming stronger than the last. After the third call, they would run to a lane where the visions first began and crash to their knees on jagged rocks in what appeared to be a heavenly rapture. Numerous spotlights are falling on Conchita's eyes, while the child, with a celestial expression, keeps on repeating the words the angel is communicating. And a witness to that final vision was Maria Sarico, whose life was changed by the experience, and she joins me now in the studio. Welcome to the program, Maria. Thank you, well, just how was your life changed after that vision? Tremendously. I had to let go of all the things that I knew were taking me away from God. The Virgin Mary appeared to these four girls to give the whole world a message, a message of prayer, penance, and sacrifice. And unless we fulfill this, God is going to send a chastisement upon all humanity. A real gift from God that he, that, um, he is sending Mary to um, give these I don't know, just great messages to the world. It's a great message of hope, as I see it. And um, I just really think you're doing an awesome job, Maria. And, um, well, thank you. And uh, our prayers are with you. Actually, I'm married now. I've got a little girl, and we've been listening um, quite keen. They've been a bit nervous about ringing up, but uh, I just really feel as though um, I should just ring up and give you all our support and love, and we're definitely here praying for you. Thank you. Let your friends know about the lectures in whatever area, uh, if, if you happen to be in one of the areas I already announced. Let me say that priests are fools of impurity. Now that's a generalization. That's a universal statement. And on behalf of all the good priests that I've known in my 53 years just gone as a priest, I'd like to protest against that. I don't think it's fair. Uh, thank you, Father, and I'm glad you did bring that out. But I just want to remind everybody, I didn't say it. The Blessed Mother said it at last let. That's how she opened up her secret. I'm only repeating it, but you're right. There are many good priests, and in my experience, I find that the ones who are really devoted to the Blessed Mother are suffering, suffering at the hands of their brother priests. And I find this to be a terrible tragedy. Yes, many good priests. And I'm pri privileged to know quite a few. With church has lost more than one third of the priests around the world. I'm scared to think that vocations have fallen down. Seminaries are closing. God knows what they're teaching them and the ones that are still open. The one thing that the Blessed Mother pointed to at Garabandal is we must pray for holy priests. She loves her priest sons. She proved it in Garabandal. She allowed a priest to see her and the forthcoming miracle. She allowed the children to see the state of the souls of the priest when they are in a state of serious sin in order to incite great fervor, greater fervor, toward prayer and sacrifice of their personal self for the right. priest sanctification. And I want to also bring out another point that came into my mind. During Vatican II, the council document said, they, they, they did a whole document on uh, the, ministry, uh, the ministry of the priesthood, and they said priests need to consecrate their sacred vocation to the maternal care of our Blessed Mother, and that's where we come in. We have to pray for that because there's too much temptation out there, and they're not going to make it without our prayers. They are not going to make it without our prayers. And that's what we have to take on. We have to take on the prayers and the sacrifices for holy priests. Because, as I said yesterday, we do what they teach us, and we teach our children, and we better make sure that they're teaching us right. Because when the Blessed Mother said they're taking many souls with them to perdition, she's not talking about the people in China or Russia or some other country. She's talking about you and me. We have to make it our business to understand our faith, live it, spread it, love it, and be ready to die for it. Uh, at um, about 11.30 the night before, 
I could clearly see that Conchita <laughs> was not aware of anybody around her. Once these girls are in ecstasy, they don't see anybody. Uh, they don't see the ground that they're walking on. They merely follow the directions of the Virgin. Uh, first of all, when the Vatican uh, is notified about a supernatural event that others think it might be, the first thing they look at is the message. The message. The message. What is it that the Blessed Mother is trying to say here in Garabandal? You heard fathers talk about the message in the homily, that we're missing the boat if we're paying too much attention to the other things. Everything else is only a proof that this is from God. But it's the, fir the first thing the Vatican looks at is the message. Then they look at the seers. Then they look at the effect that it has on others, the faith of the people. And finally, the good fruits that are supposed to come from something like this. And still they do not make a declaration. In the case of Garabandal, there is no way, people, no way that the church is going to call this supernatural at this time. Not at least until after the warning and the predicted miracle, because when there are prophecies involved that are imminent, the date is set, as I wrote in the vigil, which many of you already picked up, I don't know if you read it, there is no way the church can make a commitment. All they can do is call it natural. I'd like to go one, uh, uh, just a little bit further on this answer. This was not part of the question, but it will fit very nicely into this. You heard me speak about La Salette, Lourdes, Fatima. All three were approved by the Catholic Church. The world did not change when it was approved. And by the way, the church did not approve it until proof was given, which was the miraculous spring and the rotating of the sun that 70,000 people witnessed at Fatima, all their dirty clothes, soaking wet, full of mud, looked like they had just come out of the cleaners during the solar phenomena. But did that change the world? I don't care what the church says as long as they, they can say from now until doomsday that it's natural. It should not prevent us from living the message, which is exactly what the Gospels teach us. To reject the message of Garabandal is to reject the Gospels. You have to deny yourself daily. Pick up your cross and follow me. The Gospels teach us we have to sacrifice. We have to do penance. We must make many visits to the Holy Sacrament. Isn't this what the Church teaches us? But first of all, we must be very good. Isn't this what Christ taught us? When he said, uh, yes, the two most important commandments first 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 you love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and the second most important is like it love your neighbor as yourself there you have it and what else does the gospel tells us it tells us there are going to be chastisements from heaven the book of Revelation is full of it. Matthew 24. It's all there. The final message of the Blessed Mother, what did she say? Because my message of October the 18th, 1961, has not been fulfilled, nor has it been made very much known in the world, I will tell you this is the last one. Before 
the cup was filling. Now it is overflowing. Many cardinals, many bishops, and many priests are walking the path of perdition. And they're taking many souls with them. To the Eucharist, there is given less and less importance. We must avoid the wrath of the good God on us by our good efforts. If you ask pardon with your sincere soul, God will pardon you. It is I, your mother, who through the intercession of Michael the Archangel, wish to say that you amend your lives. You are already in the last warnings. And I love you very much. I do not want your condemnation. Ask us sincerely, and we're going to give to you. You should sacrifice more. Think of the passion of Jesus. Don't ever let anybody say to you, I'm going to wait until the church approves Garabandel. Unless they approve it, I'm not going to do a thing. Just go on. Have tunnel vision. Straight ahead. Jesus is at the end of the tunnel. And the Blessed Mother will walk every step with you to reach that tunnel. So don't, don't be afraid to deny the message of God.